Pete, and thank you, uh, Congressman Torres, for arranging our visit today. I've appreciated the opportunity to be here in Pomona and to see the setup here at, at Fairplex. As I've met with our immigration agencies, with advocates, with ORR personnel, it's clear that having more HHS space like this is the key to ensuring kids don't stay in detention for a second longer than they should. So I want to thank the folks at FEMA and HHS who are leading a government-wide effort to make sure that we move these kids quickly out of Customs and Border Protection and Border Patrol facilities and into facilities like these that are meant to care for these kids. I represent San Diego, where we've had a similar setup as this since April. Uh, it's been great to see our communities working together and learning from each other. Congressman Torres and I visited that facility together. Uh, and I'm proud that I'm from a community that has welcomed thousands of children and been a working partner with our federal government to do the right thing. I know when I hear from my constituents, and I'm sure the experience is similar for many of us, uh, we hear that they want a more compassionate approach to our immigration system. We know that the policies of chaos and fear of the previous administration are not only inhumane, they are ineffective. Cruelty does not deter migration. And it's up to us to make sure that we are making up for the trauma of the difficulty that our immigrant communities and asylum seekers had to face from the cruelty of the last administration. I'm grateful that President Biden and Vice President Harris are committed to getting this right and to building a system that restores order and fairness to the legal, legal asylum processes and keeps families together. And let me emphasize, seeking asylum is legal. It's legal under international law and it's legal under US law. This is a legal process. I'm looking forward to working with Vice President Harris, my colleague Norma Torres and others uh, to address the root causes of this migration and make sure we're being good partners in Central America, working on issues of instability, violence, corruption, and a lack of opportunity. And I'm proud that in Congress, we've already prioritized legislation that puts dignity and humanity back into our immigration system. As many of my colleagues have noted, it's part of our role as members to conduct oversight and make sure these facilities are meeting the needs of the children, the safety and privacy and health protocols um, that we know are important. And I have been really heartened by what I've seen here today. And I know that we are going to continue making sure that what we're seeing is up to the highest level of care. Our commitment should be about meeting our humanitarian and moral obligations to these kids and making sure we get this right not using these kids as a political talking point or to score political points. I know there are many people who ask, why are we doing this? Why are we spending this money when we have our own kids to take care of? And I think it's important to say we use terms like UAC or migrant to obscure the fact of the matter, that these are children, plain and simple, just children. They're children like you and I once were, like your kids or mine. In another situation, they could have been one of our kids or my great-grandmother, Bertha, who at the age of 14 escaped Russia by herself uh, and came to the United States where she was welcomed. So I think we need to make sure that as we're talking about this, we are focusing on the, the responsibility we have to take care of these children and not try and score these, these political points. With that, I'll turn it back over to my colleague uh, for questions. 